Welcome back, folks. Apologies for being a little late on the 1.1 patch test server, and that is because my mic broke. Well, technically, my XLR cable broke, and that is this thick cable right here. Wonderful. So got a new mic, got a new cable. Should sound a little better. Should. Whatever. So today, we'll take a look at the hidden vehicles added in patch 1.1. And actually, there is only one hidden vehicle, and that is the IS-2M. It is a modernization of the IS-2, and basically another premium tier 7 Russian Heavy. Wonderful. Already have the IS-2 Berlin, so this is a... Like that vehicle, with space armor, but slower. A little bit better accuracy, a little bit better aim time, but same DPM, same Russian view range. Same armor, mostly, other than the side skirts, and that's practically it. So, I don't know, if you like the Russian heavy tanks, you can actually have like 200 of them. <laughs> there is a lot, it's not like 200, but there is a lot. So, is it worth your time for another IS? Well, it has the same horsepower per ton ratio as the IS-2 in the Chinese tech tree, not in the actual Russian hybrid of an IS-1 with an IS-2 turret. That thing has like 15 horsepower per ton ratio. This has about 12.5. So it's not as aggro as the Russian version, the normal Russian IS, but still packs a punch, still has the D25T, a little bit better accuracy, a little bit better aim time, but 0.43 accuracy compared to 0.44. Not that much of a difference, right? Also, 3.1 seconds of aim time compared to 3.2, not that much different. So, yeah, you're trading horsepower per time ratio for slightly better accuracy, slightly better aim time, and it also carries about seven more rounds, seven to five, and that's it. So, you can afford to spam a little bit more, I guess, but it's an IS-2 with side skirts. So this box right here, that's the side skirt. It acts as space armor, but you don't really side scrape with the IS unless you're against lower tiers. But if they're side scraping, they get penetrated right here into the cheeks. So kind of a bad design with a pike shaped nose ish of a hull, but a little bit better with the side skirts, I guess. But it should be focused on aggro. IS has always been the same as with the uh, KV1S. Originally at tier 6. Aggro heavy tanks with large alpha, large ass guns, and against like tier 4s and tier 5s. God. Sometimes you just one shot. And that is unfair. That's why they nerfed the crap out of the KV-1S. It was too good. <laughs> so. Is it worth your time for this vehicle? Well. If you like the IS-2 Berlin, might as well buy another IS-2. So here is the comparison. The same gun, practically, just better aim time, better dispersion. A little bit, that's the accuracy, not the shooting on movement dispersion, but yeah, practically the same, other than these two categories, but 0.1 seconds and 0.01 accuracy dispersion factor, not that much. Same gun depression, same elevation, okay. Same penetration with a D25T, so also, what's good about the Chinese IS-2 compared to the Russian versions is the Russian versions get a APCR shell that's 217 millimeters of pin. That is, eh. whereas the Chinese IS-2 gets the high explosive anti tank and that's 250. So, yeah, it's like the D25T for the T44 compared to the D25T variant for the T34 A-3 uh, or Dash 2. So, there's a difference with the gold shell, but other stats wise, same armor as the IS-2 Berlin, a little bit better than the Chinese version, but it has the most health, okay. Uh, same top speed as the other Russian IS, same reverse speed, same camo, well, a little bit better than the stock IS or just IS. Not that much fascinating about this thing. I mean, it's not like it has better armor, like the T3485M compared to the T34. That's dramatically better armor, like almost 100% more armor than the T3485 
normal at tier 6. It's 45 to 75. That is a big ass jump. Whereas for this vehicle, it's the same armor as the IS-2 Berlin. Okay. So it's not like all space armor at the front as well. So justifying the slower horsepower time ratio of 12.37 compared to the Berlin version, which is about 13, and compared to the 15 on the normal IS. IS is scary because it's fast, and you could play it as a medium, supporting tier 9 heavy tanks or mediums with your D25T into the side armor and dealing about 400 alpha. That's how the IS plays as a high tier medium when your armor is not good, obviously, but this vehicle is slower to wolf pack, so be aware, but Camo wise, the same camo, same view range and other stuff, better radio, similar to the IS-2 Berlin, but uh, well, they did say a better engine, more view range, better radio, okay, more, uh, more ammo, that's the ammo capacity, but I don't know, I don't really feel like it, I mean, IS is pretty good tank, but it's mostly because of the horsepower per time ratio. And there's a big difference between having like 10 horsepower per time ratio and having 15. Recently, I played with the ARL44. Holy crap, the stock engine is garbage. Compared to the top engine, top engine gives you 15 horsepower per time ratio. That is great. It makes it feel like a uh, fat heavy or fat medium heavy-ish of a tank. Whereas the stock engine makes it feel like a freaking tog. So there is a big difference, but here is the actual stats with all the stats and stuff, but 34, uh, 35 rounds, that's pretty good for a D25T, so 5 more rounds than the average, but the penetration is the D25T, you already know this gun, it's, it's a very common gun on high tier Russian tanks, but DPM is above average, it's a premium, makes more credits, view range is garbage, but it's the same view range as a tier 8 Russian Heavy, so technically it's not bad. <laughs> Has better camo because why not? Alright, but accuracy still below average, aim time still below average, dispersion is still crap. You can make it work with the luck of the Russian bias, maybe. <laughs> but 60 degrees of gun depression, 25 elevation. Hull traverse is pretty quick though, so that's good, but... Mm, most of these other stats are similar to the IS-2, so I'll show you guys with the IS-2, but it is practically the same stats, ignored the penetration, it's based off of the high explosive anti tank shell on the IS-2 Chinese version, but better accuracy, better aim time, slightly same dispersion other than the full vehicle movement dispersion, same view range, better radio, better camo, slightly better, but Less horsepower per time ratio, less top speed, same terrain resistance. So this will feel slower than the Chinese version of the IS-2. Has the most health, but 20 more is not that much. Same ammo rack, so blah. Wow, the engine is rather weak, so be aware of a damaged engine. Yep, a mm, little bit better armor at the front, 10 millimeters, but that's pretty much it. So here is the tanking inspector's other competitor, tanks.gg, but they have the actual armor model. But yeah, you basically don't want to side scrape because this exposed this cheek. You do have space armor, but yeah, I mean, it's an IS-2. You already know this armor. Yeah, the same armor at the front, about 170-ish millimeters effective. A lower plate is garbage, turret is garbage, large cupola, just shoot the cupola, or shoot the turret front. Ugh. So, armor wise, I don't think this armor works with that low of a horsepower per time ratio, but here is a little comparison with the IS-2, the Chinese version. So, better aim time, better dispersion, slower shell velocity, hmm, interesting, carries more rounds by 7 shells, more potential damage, obviously. Uh, slower to turn, slower to rev up, yep, better gun depression, less engine health, yeah, engine is prone to damage, so that's pretty much it, I mean, uh, is it worth your time? Well, if you like the Russian heavy tanks, you probably will get one, but 
it's probably about 25 bucks 30 bucks so i wouldn't if you already have one dedicated premium russian heavy tank to train your crews you probably don't need another one because there's so many of them like the is6 well no ugh. <laughs> Not the IS-6, but like the IS-6, like the IS-3A, what else do you have? Like the KV-122, 122, <laughs> Also, we have the KV-122, I forgot to mention. Well, technically, it's a KV chassis, but still, KV-122 is based off of <sighs> this thing. <laughs> Let's take a look how, how crappy the KV-122 is. Yeah, don't get it, because it's tier 7 as well. It's a tier 7 premium. God damn! As a crappier armor set, crappier uh, dispersion, similar, but takes the longest to reload the gun. Wonderful. Less gun elevation, so average DPM is not as good as the IS counterpart. Armor is weaker. Engine power is closer to the IS default, the stock or the normal IS. But view range is still, wow, better by 10 mil, uh, 10 millimeter, by 10 meters. Hmm, still, I think it's garbage. It's mostly based on the fact that you could play this as a medium, but the DPM on this thing is not great. So, holy crap. How many premium Russian heavy tanks do you have at tier 7? You can actually make a whole new line of a normal tech tree with just premium tanks. God. So, KV-220, you have... Another crew trainer, Churchill 3, but Defenders, Object 252Us, there's a lot of premium Russian heavies, not including the high tier ends for rewards, like the Object 260, like the new Object 726, holy crap. So, is the IS-2M worth your time? Well, if you, first time, if you like the IS, if you like the look of it, sure. It's, it's another, just whatever. <laughs> well, it does look pretty good with the modernization of the space armor stuff, sure. <laughs> but uh, it's IS. It's, it's tried and true, but there's a lot of them, so. Oh well, so there you go, folks. The new hidden vehicle in patch 1.1. Apologies again for the slower response to the test server because the mic broke, but I was really hype on Thursday or Friday about this test server. Not because of the Polish tanks. The Polish tanks were expected. We we're expecting to see the Polish, but I wasn't expecting the campaign season number two for personal missions. That was pretty nuts. So yeah, new Polish tanks, basically a fusion of the IS-4 with the E-100. <laughs> Or basically a forward mounted version of a 705A line. And that's bullish. So, yeah. Large alpha, large turrets, gun depression too, surprisingly. But, yeah, not really interested that much about the Polish. I mean, granted, they're having a conventional playstyle as a pseudo Russian slash gun depression heavy, like a American or German, but. It's conventional. It's a single shot, one shot turret with a gun or one shot gun into a turret that you bounce shots with. I mean, it's, it's not auto loader. It's not auto reloader. It's not a new mechanic of a gun. So it's like the Italians, but the Italians are a little bit more interesting at the later tiers because of the auto reloader and their potential to be flexible. Whereas these, uh, these vehicles are just there. So, I mean, I'm expecting something good with the STI into the new ST2 or STII with the dual barrel 122. That would be fun. That would be a new mechanic and you fire two guns at the same time. That would be crazy, but mm, okay. So let's talk about the fun stuff with patch 1.1 and that is the new campaign for personal missions. I wasn't expecting it. I wasn't expecting this to come with the Polish tanks as well as map rework for like two and a half maps two two and a half new maps that is crazy also four maps are getting reworked for balancing that's a lot of stuff also the vision revision to the sound stuff rework all right sure and the shop stuff Ugh. 
This is a footnote. This is not that interesting. Oh god. It's taking forever to load as well. Guys, it's convoluted. It's too much. You don't need it. See? The normal shop screen in the current patch is fine. It's simple. It's not that complex. You're just putting different pictures into bullshit. <laughs> we don't need this. This is horse crap. You don't need the new shop UI thingy. It doesn't work well. It's convoluted. I don't need that much pictures. I can read. What the hell is it? Oh, ugh, ugh, no KV. Forever grudge with the KV-122. What a piece of shit. <laughs> Not the fact that the tank is bad. The fact that you're using a KV-1 or KV-85 is a freaking premium. It's just like, pfft. Same collision model, same... Ugh, fucking... Alright, enough about this piece of turd. Let's talk about the campaign. So, Excelsior. Holy crap, 2,400 DPM base without a rammer. Yeah, the pedal van is great. Also, there is a lot better, more efficient way of doing these missions and without using light tanks or artillery or tank destroyers if you don't want to play with those, you can just play with nations so you have the Chinese and the Russians you have the German and the Japanese so on and so forth so yeah, pretty good way of splitting up the different campaigns for different engine parts or blueprint parts, whatever but you do get a lot more rewards. And the Excalibur is a lot more centri uh, centrifugal, focused on centrifugal focus, centered on grinding rather than doing well. So it's more like Modern Warfare esque of getting 100 headshots for a camo. It is basically the same. You get damage. Enable to or enable your allies to deal 15,000 damage spotting and that's a grind But after the grind you get the credits and you get closer to getting the tank Whereas for the Chimera, it's more like the traditional first season of personal missions So you just do good and you get the stuff Whereas for the last vehicle set for the object 279E or 726 It is more like a series of doing well so it's even more difficult than the Chimera, but we'll see. You do get female crews. You do get premium time, I presume. No premium time? Yeah, premium time. So you can actually choose when you can finish this to coordinate with events to get more stuff out of those like always 2x XP. And that's a lot of XP if you time that well with the premium time. So save some of these missions for special events like the Christmas events or uh, Thanksgiving events or anniversary. We just had the anniversary. Oh well. So that's what I meant. But yeah, I wasn't expecting personal missions version number 2.0 in this patch. That is pretty cray cray. So there you go folks. IS-2M and my hype for 1.1. Not because of the Polish tanks. Mostly because of the personal missions. But for this vehicle, take it or leave it. I mean, it's not bad. It's different because the collision model is different than the IS. It's different than the IS-2, technically by the freaking space armor, but it's a little bit more work, slightly more work than the KV-122. So whatever. Not that exciting, not that crazy. Like the T-3485M compared to the T-3485, it's a dramatically different vehicle. Whereas for this thing, it's like a IS-2 Berlin-ish. So. Thank you guys for watching this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time. Leave a comment about the new mic because I don't know the quality and other stuff. But uh, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.